ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ان من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وضع الحجه واتم المحجه ويأبى الله إلا أن يتم نوره ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله تعالى به الأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم صل عليه وعلى آله وصحابته وأزواجه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم آمين أما بعد إخوتي وأخواتي في الله فبداية أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل قد قال تعالى في محكم تنزيله بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وإن خير الهدي هدي نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي. Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after praising God Almighty in abundant praise, we thank Him, we beseech Him for His mercy and His forgiveness. For indeed, he who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, he who God Almighty guides, then no one can misguide him. And he whom Allah allows to be misguided, then no one can guide him. And we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship save God alone above seven heavens. And that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his last and final messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, upon his family, upon his wives, upon his companions, and upon all those who follow in his footsteps until the day of judgment. Allah Amen. We begin the sermon by reminding one another, as our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reminded his companions at the beginning of every sermon with the concept of taqwa, of God consciousness, of being mindful of your Lord at all times and at all places. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the third chapter of the Quran, O you who believe, have taqwa of your Lord as he is worthy of, and die not except in a state of total submission to him, except as Muslim. With your respect, brothers and sisters, over the past week, it's quite clear that the only thing that's been on our minds and our Twitter feeds and our news feeds is the recent happenings in Boston. Without explaining too much what happened, since I'm sure everyone is very familiar, but this great crime, this great heinous act of cowardice against these civilians that took place on one day, and as the news, you know, as we continuously learn more and more, I felt that it was only appropriate to talk about uh, what happened there in light of a verse in the Qur'an. Just one verse, inshallah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit with that which we hear. Hear that which benefits us and increase us in knowledge and wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says <coughs> in Surah Al-Ma'idah, excuse me, in the fifth chapter of the Qur'an, in the second verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu لا تحل شعائر الله ولا الشهر الحرام ولا الهدي ولا القلائد ولا من البيت الحرام يبتغون فضلا من ربهم ورضوانا وإذا حللتم فاصطادوا ولا يجد منكم شنآن قوم أن صدوكم عن المسجد الحرام أن تعتدوا وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان 
ولا يفي ذي عهد عهدا فليس مني ولست منه. This is an authentic hadith in the collection of Muslim, the end of the hadith which says, And whoever goes out against my people, indiscriminately killing the sinner of them and the righteous one of them. And then he says, And the one that does not uh, fulfill the rights of the people we have treaties with, the Prophet says about this person, I am not from them and they are not from me. I am not from them, and they are not from me. In another tradition, the Prophet ﷺ says that whoever kills Mu'alida, a Mu'alid, by the way, we said this person we have treaties with, the scholars say in the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu awfu bin arqud. It's the first verse of that chapter we're talking about. Oh, you believe, fulfill your oaths. Ibn Kathir says, oaths here is any treaties you may have with the people. And the scholars almost unanimously, unanimously agree that when you enter a country or a place, and you're given visa, and you're given legal status, you're given status to live here, then you're given that with the understanding that you're going to obey the law of the land. So killing these people is prohibited from an Islamic framework. And the Prophet ﷺ says in another hadith, he says, whoever kills someone of that, he will not enter paradise, nor will he smell paradise, and indeed paradise can be smelled from far, like any said very, very far away. So it's, it's very, very clear in our tradition. You know, we can mention different hadith and verses and continue, but for you as a believer that's listening to the news, if you may have doubts about this, as the Prophet ﷺ said, indeed, the solution to ignorance is to ask. Figure out in your tradition what about it says that this is not allowed. The Prophet ﷺ is recorded also in the Latik hadith that he prohibited the killing of women and children in a state of war, in a state of war, this isn't a state of war, but in a state of war, he prohibited, prohibited killing of women and children. So what about elsewhere? Needless to say, this is a great act that goes against our paradigm of Islamic justice, and so on and so forth. So this is number one, that these killings, we speak out against them in the strongest of terms, and we shouldn't be shy about it. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't let the fact that a people prohibited you from coming to the sacred house of Allah, don't let that make you uh, uh, go against the law, or break the law, or break justice in a different verse. The reason of revelation of this verse was during the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. For those that remember, the, the Muslims went to make Umrah, which is a lesser pilgrimage in Mecca. And the people of Mecca didn't allow them in. And the Prophet ﷺ struck a treaty with them. And the treaty had several terms. We're not going to go into them now. But one of the terms was that they were going to make the lesser pilgrimage that year. They were going to go back and they'll come the next year. As soon as this treaty was struck, or written down and agreed upon between the Prophet ﷺ and the representatives from Quraysh, a group of uh, non-Muslim idol worshippers from a different area of Arabia were coming to make the pilgrimage, the lesser pilgrimage. And some of the companions at that point, they said to themselves, well, if we can't make pilgrimage because we believe in one God, why should they, allow, why should they be allowed to make pilgrimage? We're going to stop them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, that don't let your hatred for a people, don't let a circumstance prevent you from being just. Allah says in another verse, Allah says, don't let the hatred for the people prevent you from being just. Be just and it's closer to taqwa. It's closer to God consciousness. It is no secret that historically, I mean, we still don't know the motives of these two brothers that did this. We can guess, but there's, there's no point of doing that. But generally speaking, historically, when something like this happened, it was politically motivated. Right? And it is no secret that our foreign policy, our country's foreign policy is not great. Actually, it sucks. Just to be blunt, in terms of, in terms of speaking, it's really, really bad. Right? That's no secret. However, when we see what's happening there, or when we see what our country is doing, and we decide to take matters in our own hands, that's taking, we're putting our place and we're putting our place in the place of the Shadrach, in the place of the legislator who is a law. Because what are we saying? 
not me, I'm gonna, no one's done this, but the people that are doing this, what are they saying? They're saying that nothing that we can do is sufficient to bring justice for the injustice that our foreign policy has done. So we're gonna take matter in our own hands and that which Allah did not legislate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الْهَوَىٰ أَنْ تَعْدِدُ Do not follow your desires in seeking justice. Because if we were to follow our desires, alhamdulillah, if we were to follow our desires, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say that you would see bloodshed. وَلَوْ اتَّبَعَ الْحَقُّ أَهْوَىٰهُ If truth were to follow their desires, you would see bloodshed left and right. But alhamdulillah, truth does not follow our desires. Truth comes from al-haq himself. The absolute truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this breaks the paradigm of Allah's name and kafi, that Allah is sufficient for us. So, for instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the dua, excuse me, the Prophet says, This is a hadith in Isa'i, it's an authentic hadith. The Prophet said, Allah gives victory to this community, to the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the supplication, the prayer, and the, and the sincerity of its weak members. So someone will say, well, you know, we're weak here, obviously, we really, we really don't have much say. We can do everything in our, in our ability. You know, we can protest, we can write to our, 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 our you know, our uh, representatives, we can organize, but then, at the end of the day, all we have is dua. Someone will say, well, that's not enough. Well, then argue with the Prophet Don't argue with, with, with us. Because that's what the Prophet said. The real question is, do you have the patience and the faith to believe that what Allah and His Messenger said وسلم, is true? Do you believe in the power of dua? Do you really spend your nights in dua because of the hurt? Or do we think that we can just take an easy shortcut in life? You know, this is talking about violent killings, but this applies to everything in life. Do we think we can just take easy shortcuts in getting that which we want and taking, you know, like a shortcut around to the lies which have made permissible? We can't do this, you know? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't follow your own desires in seeking justice. Inshallah, the next month we'll talk about what we can do. That the hour has come near and people are in heedlessness turning away from the hour. Allah saying the hour is literally approaching and people are heedless turning away from the hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says anytime a, a remembrance comes from their Lord, they listen to it or they hear it while they're playing and their hearts are distracted. Brothers and sisters, not only is that hour approaching near and things getting made yet very difficult for us here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith that 
Uh, you know, um, one of the signs, this, this, and this hadith is in the Quran, that the sign of the hour coming, he mentions a few things. The knowledge will be lifted. Earthquakes will become more frequent. We ask Allah to remove the difficulty from our brothers and sisters in Iran and Sardia and Emirates and that area where they experienced earthquakes last week. Earthquakes will become will, will, will increase. Time will pass quickly. He says, murder or yaktur al-haraj. Murder and killing will increase. And in another hadith, he says that murder will increase such that he says, murder will increase to the point that the killer will have no idea why they killed. And the one who was murdered will have no idea why they were murdered. And I remember this hadith last week, there was, there was a story in England of, of, of two young, maybe 16 or 17 year old boys who killed a homeless man. Maybe some of you read the story in the news. And they asked them, why did you kill them? They said, we don't know, we just felt like it. And now you have these, you have young Muslim brothers, young Muslim males who have this you know, this, you know this, uh, this zeal for their religion, who are either being entrapped by, by this country's agents, and this is very true and it's happening, or maybe they're not being entrapped, however, they're listening to some crazy rhetoric that has no basis on the internet. And they have no idea why they're doing that, except that it feels good for them to rush, it's almost like a roller coaster or something. And this isn't right. This is not right. So we need to wake up and figure out what we're doing as a community. You know, we can't spend hours on Reddit and looking at these Inger, what is it, I-N-G-U-R, just pictures of people and then just text there and everyone's laughing. It's so silly, it's so stupid. I mean, we really need to wake up as a community and figure out what we're doing. We need to speak to our neighbors, we need to teach them about Islam. And this is a personal responsibility. It's not only a communal responsibility, it's not something that MSA should do. I mean, it is something that MSA should do. But it's your individual responsibility, it's my individual responsibility to engage the community at large and to really go out of the box. Because if we don't, we're going to be asked about it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, what did you do to teach about Islam? What did you do to help these people? To help our brothers and sisters in Boston? What, I mean, what did you do to, to make things, to teach people about this message that we have? We're going to, we're going to have to have an answer. So, uh, you know, we ask Allah Azza to make us from those that spread this message. We ask Allah Azza to make us from those that have piety and taqwa and cooperate in that which is good and right. We ask Allah Azza to keep steadfast and patient our brothers and sisters in Boston. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them ease. We ask Allah Azza to remove the hardship from them. We ask Allah Azza to remove the hardship from our brothers and sisters all around the world. Oh Allah, remove the hardship from them. Oh Allah, keep them steadfast. Oh Allah, cure those who are sick. Oh Allah, guide those who are misguided. O oh Allah, forgive those who have sinned. O oh Allah, bring together between the hearts of those who are, are not on good terms with one another. O oh Allah, as you have gathered us today, gather us as the most beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.